I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. Hello horror hounds, welcome to my horror house. Now, with both Alligator and its sequel coming to Shudder in June, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to finally break out that disc two of my <laughs> Alligator DVD and check out Alligator 2 The Mutation. And having watched it last night, I feel that this video will now be some form of public service announcement. Guys who are regular to the channel and may remember a long, long time ago, I reviewed Alligator. It is actually, let me put this in some context for you. Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. And Alligator is my absolute favorite sort of post Jaws bandwagon jumper, uh, animal run amok monster movie in the vein of Jaws. I think Alligator in its own right, is, is at the apex of those sort of Joe Dante's piranha type films that followed in the wake of Jaws. It's funny, the effects are excellent, the kills are brutal. It gets the mix exactly right. Alligator 2, the mutation, is like someone who hasn't gone and got their cocktail making PhD and thinks that they have all, I've got all the same ingredients for this cocktail at home, although I, oh, I'll, I'll have to swap out uh, Pepsi for Dr. Pepper, and I'll have to sw swap out uh, gin for vodka, but the cocktail's gonna be pretty much the same, isn't it? No. Alligator 2, the mutation, is an absolutely painful watch. Uh, a director video sequel some 11 years after the original film that in its own way is more of a remake of the film on a smaller budget and a desperate Jaws wannabe. A modern example would be Deep Blue Sea 2, which is essentially a remake of Deep Blue Sea on a much smaller budget with none of the magic and none of the, none of the chemistry there. As it is, Alligator 2, The Mutation, uh, starts bad and apart from a few bright spots, which are solely provided by uh, certain actors trying their absolute best. It is a bit of a dirge. Let me warn you, there is no mutation. Uh, there's a, a line which suggests that because chemicals have been dumped into the sewer, this alligator is, is now a mutant, but there's no mutation on show. There is barely any alligator on show. The best alligator shots in this movie are shots that have been lifted directly from the original film alligator the movie starts with our villain overseeing chemicals being dumped directly into the sewer and then we go straight to a couple of locals who are doing some night fishing in a local resort lake which confused me but straight off the bat the warning signs are all there. This first attack scene is an intercut of actors in the water up to their waist going Aah! and then some underwater shots with a sort of red lens over it of uh, an alligator's jaw in silhouette back and forth and back and forth with some really plinky plonky keyboard music that brought to mind uh, 90s TV scores for me. Something like um, the Tales from the Dark Side uh, TV series. We're in that kind of ballpark. The not good ballpark. We follow police detective Hodges, who has a connection with the local community and doesn't play by the rules, uh, continually misses date nights with his wife because he's working nights and is so focused on the job. And he's sort of the lone voice trying to convince his captain that there's an alligator there. Meantime, there's a corrupt mayor who's in cahoots with this property developer who wants to, to buy up all the property and build condos. And you know, locals go missing, a couple of homeless guys go missing, and no one's really listening to this lone voice cop until it's too late and then the alligator crashes the the party at this big sort of lakeside condo launch thing and if all of that sounds really trite and really cliched it's because it 
is. There are so many Jawsisms in this film. It becomes painful. Um, I, I, I wrote them down as I was watching them. You you have the dodgy mayor. Hello, Mayor Vaughan. Um, you have, uh, towards the end, briefly, a triumvirate, as you do in Jaws. You have middle-aged cop. You have uh, the younger guy. And then you have the grizzled monster hunter. Uh, very, very briefly, they all go out <laughs> on... <laughs> on the lake in a boat so you get the little orca section uh, in in miniature there with those three on on the boat uh the hunter uh does die in exactly the same way quint dies in the jaws of the creature uh, stabbing the creature as he's dying there is uh like uh, hooper's little um uh, cyanide spear spear dart gun or something that that makes an appearance as well um the alligator eats some explosives, just like the sh uh, shark eats that compressed air tank. Um, and it explodes at the end after our cop hero says something whilst uh, firing at it. Of course, iconically, Roy Scheider says, smile, you son of a, in one of the most glorious scenes in all movie history. Uh, here, Joseph Bologna looking, <laughs> looking down the barrel of a little sort of personal bazooka says, come to daddy, which doesn't have quite the same resonance. <laughs> Joseph Bologna as uh, Hodges the detective, I, I, I don't know what to make of him. I can kind of see what he's going for and I suggest he's possibly miscast. He's going for a sort of laconic, easy laid back charm. He's uh, the cop that gets things done has ties with the local community, but doesn't take any S from his captain and doesn't mind bending or breaking the rules to get results, damn it. But he's just so laid back and laconic in this. He really has a sort of Ray Romano <laughs> vibe to him. If you can imagine Ray Romano as a sort of cop who's, ah, yeah, all, all right. He is no Robert Forster from, from, the, from the first movie who really pitched it to B-movie brilliance. Robert Forster in Alligator knew exactly what movie he was in. He knew what kind of leading man he was supposed to be. It's a, That's a film that doesn't mind poking fun at its leading man. He took, t takes it all on the chin. Alligator, I, I continue to say it, is an absolutely perfect little package of uh, a B-movie monster movie. It, it's pretty much flawless. What it sets out to do, it achieves wonderfully. Here, you have everyone really fighting uh, a script that is cliche ridden and a shoot that doesn't allow for any big alligator set pieces because the alligator model is awful. You just, you see it sort of puppet head moving around a bit. It, they've got a, a tail that tail swipes lots of people. More people get knocked over by the fucking tail than chomped by the alligator and that is not what you want from a movie called alligator 2 the mutation what you want is people being eaten by a mutant alligator d wallace plays detective hodge's wife in an absolutely thankless role she is also a scientist so it's her job to be on the end of the phone looking down a microscope explaining the samples that they've gathered or turning up in a car with it here this is the poison dart that you need She's a she's a bright spark in the movie. She deserves much better than this. I mean, she is she is a superior actor. Uh, Brock Peters not in it enough. He plays uh, the stereotypically angry captain. Uh, he he does what he's meant to perfectly well, and he gets an absolute pass for me because he's a Star Trek alumni. He was uh, an admiral in two of the Trek movies, and Cisco's dad in Deep Space Nine. Live long and prosper. A little baby face Kane Hodders in this, and I was thinking at the time, he's he's one of the alligator hunters, gang of alligator hunters, and I thought, okay, uh, this movie might be worth it if we get to see a very young baby faced Kane Hodder get chomped by an alligator. We see him instead sort of get nudged by the rubber nose of the th the model which isn't articulated enough to even open its mouth in those shots steve railsback plays the sleazy property developer i know him from from life force he does exactly what he's supposed to do he's the slimy sleazy 90s corporate scumbag richard lynch is our grizzled quint figure he's having fun he's doing a sort of uh southern bayou 
sort of New Orleans type accent. He's giving that a go. He's having fun with it. <laughs> Why not? And um, Holly Gagnier is um, not a name I'm familiar with, but she plays the mayor's daughter. And she is such a bright spark in this movie. You might suggest that her character is, is absolutely surplus to requirements. She has a little bit of a romantic connection with the, the, the rookie cop that helps Hodges. And yeah, I'd rather more scenes of action than their burgeoning relationship. But she's actually alive on screen. She's alive and animated and, and, and brings a sort of spark to it. You get these, these actors who have named, who keep trying to zap the dead body of this movie, trying to jerk it into some kind of life with, with the talent that they have. But the, the corpse of this movie was absolutely dead on arrival. It is, it's painful to watch them try. I salute them for giving their absolute all. But no, this is an absolute dud. If you've seen Alligator on Shudder this month and wonder if you should watch Alligator 2 straight after, my advice for you would be to watch Alligator again, just straight over. Double bill the movie. Watch it twice. I promise you, you're missing nothing and you'll just be gaining another 90 minutes of awesome alligator fun. All of that sounds really trite and really cliched. It's because it is.